Let's talk a little bit about, like, uh, I mean, because you mentioned you you follow some, you used to follow some Russian media yeah. to see the propaganda. You mentioned you watched clips of the Putin interview. One of the things he says a lot, and which is in a lot of like Russian official documents, is that Ukraine and Belarus are part of the the Russian world, the Ruski Mir, right? And he uses that to kind of justify oh ukraine and belarus are part of you can't separate them from russia i think to the people who don't know history don't know i mean i have to be honest most people in the u.s don't even know that ukraine is a separate language sometimes that would happen it used to happen at least not before the full-scale invasion but not anymore. I, I, I like, luckily I didn't really get these questions anymore. Because mm -hmm. if I would, I would be very pissed. But like, I used to, I used to have these questions like, oh, this is like different language. I mean, yeah. yeah. And it's I mean, actually different. Like, the like what really surprises me that people don't really understand that like, for example, you, all Ukrainians, we speak Russian. We know the Russian yeah. perfectly. But almost no Russians understand Ukrainian. So if I would start speaking in ukrainian to russians they would mm -hmm. understand like some words because yeah. there is a concept of like surzik which is like combination of two languages yeah. because of their like ethnicity and background and all the things that happened but overall it's two different languages and yeah. you cannot compare them like it's like polish and ukrainian as well like it's it's different totally mm -hmm. different like yeah, sorry, you were asking something. I I moved from the topic. Well, well, the point was, I mean, you kind of the point is like, I think the the lay person, right? They hear that and they're like, oh well, you know, culture is kind of similar. They're bordering both parts of the the USSR. Um, on paper, their languages look similar. Uh, you know, people look kind of similar. Um, you know, I don't understand why that's wrong. I mean, so do you have any, can you help the kind of, <laughs> uh, that type of person understand why Ukraine, like why Ukraine does not belong to Russia? I mean, now that's kind of a, it's so, it's such a weird question because you wouldn't ask any other nation yeah. to justify, like, <laughs> why? Why, why, why you deserve to be like, I mean, yeah. <laughs> like, but, Unfortunately, right, because that comes out of the Russian propaganda so frequently. I think, uh, <laughs> I don't really know how to even compare it, but like, for example, recently UK separated from the European Union. Like, right. Well, you cannot really say now that they are belong to European Union, but like, I think Soviet Union, European Union is the same sort of concept when they like countries separated. It was like that combination of uh, independent countries in the beginning. Yeah. Like there was not the fact of like Ukraine was part of Russia. And then it one day they were like, no, this part <laughs> is ours. This is the border. You don't go there. Like. In the beginning, Ukraine was an independent country right. that joined as all other countries as Kazakhstan, etc. Like they joined the Soviet Union, and when the Soviet Union separated, Ukraine as well separated from Soviet Union. It doesn't have any relation to Russia. It's the same to say like, oh, that Kazakhstan own Ukraine or Ukraine own right. Kazakhstan. Right. Like it's just it just doesn't make sense. Like it's the same as like U.S looks like like separate not only continent but like we have European Union we have uh like US and we ha you had Soviet Union sort right of. so when they separated like the countries that were independent they still are independent and just because Ukrainian fields are like recognized are like Ukrainian basically is a good business. You have a good fields, you can like grow agriculture. And I think one of the reasons why Russia is like so precise with that, because they can like double the income sort of right. from that. And uh, just because of someone saying like it's theirs, it's not going to become theirs. Right. Like, you know, right. it, it is it is very weird. Like it's the same if you would like give me the microphone and I would say like, now it's mine. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I touched it, you know, I like met you and now like I I'm, have a right to steal what you have. Yeah. No. And I think 
Did you actually know that during like Soviet Union times and past times, why people like oh no Russian is just because old schools, theaters, everything was like forbidden to be like shown or spoken in Ukrainian. Mm-hmm. So basically, you could you can be and you will would be imprisoned if you like write in Ukrainian. Mm-hmm. Like for example, famous authors like I don't know Taras Shevchenko. Uh, one of the like famous writers in Ukraine, like he was imprisoned for the fact of like writing in Ukrainian, yeah, because it was forbidden by the government. Mm. I mean, that's why. I mean, I guess the comparison is like why so much of Latin America speaks Spanish mm-hmm. when they were just they were colonized and they were like yeah. forced to speak Spanish. Um, that doesn't make them. That doesn't mean they belong to. Right. Yeah. Um, and I think too, like, especially in Europe, the borders of countries have changed so much over history. And, you know, you could point to so many countries. I mean, Turkey is a big one where I'm like, well, a lot of it should belong to Greece. Um, but, okay. you know, there's um, another one is like northern Macedonia. You know, there's a whole thing with Bulgaria. And um, so I think. You know, there's so many borders that have changed our history in Europe and the way the size of the countries and the way they've been. But I think the problem is, right, if you keep on trying to, like, we're at a certain point now where the borders are the way they are, the countries have a sovereign nation, and we're not going to, we're just going to have constant war if we're just going to, like, dispute those borders. Like, at a certain point, we have to say, okay, these are the borders this is the way it is, you know, let's respect each other's autonomy. Um, I think just the point, like, we have a saying in, in Eastern Europe and Ukraine as well, like, that the history doesn't judge the winners. And I guess because of this sort of, like, establishment in world, basically, history and, like, mentality, like, people forget things over time. Well, if we have a look, there's almost no country in the world who have never been on the war and whose territory yeah. was not occupied or like separated or like changed, what? right? Exactly. So that's why I think what you're saying is quite right, but to the same extent, like one of the like pro-Russian thought is like Ukraine is a territory, but Ukraine is a country. Like we have a very interesting like grammar point for example we say ukraina mm-hmm. and some russians say ukraina just okay. because of like and the same is like you cannot say the ukraine because therefore territory but sometimes you even see it in the news or like for russian sort of like um newspapers or debates like this is wrong because Ukraine is not the territory, it's country. Right. This is like a concept of like sharing the territory. Mm-hmm. It's just a bit different, I think, in this case. And there is a lot of like pro-Russian grammar or like news or thoughts that you sometimes use. You don't even know that is this. Just like it's more understandable if you like speak Ukrainian. I would explain this. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But it's just a grammar point, the way you like put the spelling or like uh, the way you spell some words or like do you use the with them or a like a or like and sort of with mm-hmm. them it's just the case yeah so in short when i was invited to the podcast i wanted to combine it with the fundraising and i chose the company that my friends own it is basically in ukraine but operates worldwide it's called Tvori Dobro, which basically translates into like make good deeds and this is a charity organization that is helping women and kids who suffered from the war in 2022, 2023, 24, and right now and the future. And they are making the fundraising for the needs of those who suffered from the war from uh, Eastern region, primarily for like kids and women, mainly for psychological support for those kids who are left without their parents because of the war. And they're making just like supplies of uh, medicine, psychological help, clothing, toys, etc. So basically, first need that you need. And we're going to probably 
left the link down below so you can have a look on their website or Instagram or social medias to like see their data yourself so you can be sure that there is like internationally recognized organization. Uh, also, as sort of like giveaway we wanted to do in order to like stimulate people to donate, uh, basically kids, those kids I was just mentioned before, they made like a small workshop where they like done some paintings and one of the paintings and done together and there is a painting with like ukrainian symbolics on it and the name of the organization was like ukrainian flags and everything uh like this kind of a size of the painting so quite big uh that uh was taken from all the way on the car from ukraine kiev to here wow yeah so uh we're gonna be like giving it away for a random donation so from all of the donations that were made starting from today to like let's say a month's time uh we'll just choose a donation that's gonna uh like based on the number system which is going to choose a donation randomly and send the painting wherever whenever you want mm. uh, for you as a bonus can i can i just ask one is that because i have listeners that are kind of in all over the world all over the world so is that just for people that are in edinburgh no, we can we can uh, if this painting got from Ukraine, I'm sure we can deliver it to you anywhere. To the to <laughs> New York City. Of course. Um and and so this is this is just to clarify, this is an organization that's helping women and children in Ukraine right now. Yeah. That seems like a noble cause. 